Hey everyone, Aaron with Elite Water Sports, Aaron, we are gonna go over some wing winging basics and just actually just hydrofoils, okay? And the positioning and how to ride the board, some do's and don'ts, some safety, just everything that uh, we go over in a lesson when you come out to the beach with us, all right? So um, just to start, we're gonna be using our beginner board today as far as uh, just going over how we set up things, okay? I like to all first start off with what are we using? We're gonna be using the biggest wing possible to make it as slow as possible with the most amount of stability, all right? The bigger the wing, the easier it's going to be. That's just super, super basic, uh, a good way of thinking about it. Most are gonna come in square centimeters. This one happens to be 2,400. And for the most part, uh, you know, apples for apples, bigger is easier, smaller is harder. Why is smaller harder? Typically because you have to go a lot faster with a smaller wing, which is more intimidating, okay? So that is the biggest factor there. And typically we'll use not a full-size mast, which would be maybe 72, 75 centimeters all the way through 100 centimeters long. The shorter typically is easier. And there is a point of um, uh, reverse, you know, progression would be too small could possibly be harder. Also, depending on how choppy it is or possibly um, what wing you're using, okay? So on average, a 72 centimeter mass all the way through 60 centimeters would be our go-to size for beginners, all right? Now, when you get into fuselages, typically there's an average fuselage that a, um, a company would sell. This happens to be a 60 centimeter. So don't get wrapped up too much on the length of the, uh, the fuselage. Um, just go with the average or the go-to sizing for a company. Um, some of them make them up to 75, 80 centimeters. It does increase pitch stability on the length of the, uh, the fuselage. So if you were to go too short, it is going to have less pitch control. Uh, as you go longer, more pitch control, but perhaps uh, the, the foil itself isn't as fun later down the road, okay? A lot of different factors as far as purchasing one. But we're gonna focus on beginner stuff, all right? So another thing what we do is back for beginner, right? Typically as a first uh, foiler, you're going to uh, initiate putting a lot of weight on your back foot, which is wrong. We wanna put as much weight on your front foot. How to counteract some of that engagement of the foil is by pushing that foil all the way back. That creates more lift off the back of the board versus towards the middle of the board. When you're riding, riding a, a, the board and you're trying to not engage the foil, if that foil's further forward, it's going to want to push that nose up, which you're already going to be inclined to do just because you've wakeboarded, you've kiteboarded, you've snowboarded, a lot of back foot pressure. All right, so as you progress, you may start to bring that foil forward just to give yourself a nice equal stance. But at this beginner level, you need to have as much weight on that front foot as possible. This is one way to counteract that, at least to give you a little better feel. There is a technical aspect to shimming back wings and some companies offer that. It's a little bit on the more technical side. And unless you have a local dealer or a shop that really knows the product that they're selling, you can get really lost in translation on what those shims mean. Let's not talk about that today. We're just trying to make a nice, easy video on the bare basics, okay? All right, so back for beginner, bigger wings for beginner, shorter mass for beginner, all right? Let's talk about the board, all right? Now, when you start on the board, and we're out in the water for your first engagement of, of the foil, your first exposure, okay? We typically want to start on our knees. On our knees is gonna allow us to go as slow as possible with a little bit of stability, okay? And we're just gonna be flying that wind wing. In this case, wind winging. With uh, kite foiling, you don't have that luxury. You're gonna be standing right away. What we like to see our clients do is, uh, our students do is, to somewhat have in the peripherals, have this nose of the board just barely purling on the water. Now, if you're going super slow, of course you're going to have to go back. But as you increase speed, we want you to slowly start moving forward, really walk those knees forward. As long as you have forward momentum, that's what we're looking for you to do. 
Now, if I have the, the wind off to my left side, the port side, I'm gonna want to put up my left foot first before I stand, okay? And everybody wants to go straight to the standing position as soon as they get one foot up. We want you to stay crouched down into the kneeling position. Once you get one foot up, just leave it that way, continue wind winging, and keep that board on the water, all right? So as you go to stand up, you don't have to jump up to your feet. When you jump up like that, most likely you're gonna engage the foil and shoot out of the water. Now this whole time, this board's in the water. We never want to engage the foil ever until we are in a standing position. Um, so going back to your knees, just make sure that you're as far forward as possible, making sure that that nose of the board, is just barely purling the water, maybe just a little bit of spray coming over the front. As you feel more comfortable, you have pressure in the sail, you have some forward momentum, get one knee up. Now, when you go to stand up, watch, I don't have to move my back foot at all. Notice that the toes are down. I'm gonna go toes up and then nice slow stand. All right, as I stand up, if you notice my back leg is straight and my front leg is bent. That's the ideal body positioning as if you're doing like yoga pose, like a warrior pose, keeping all that pressure through your hips and into your front foot. Notice I can lift my back foot. If you can do that, you're doing it right, okay? If you can't lift your back foot, that means look at my body positioning, I'm way too far back. As I progress, I wanna keep that front foot really engaged and then to feel as if I can lift my back foot at any moment, okay? If you do that, you're gonna be super successful. That's the hardest thing for us to teach you is just to get into that pelvic thrust, pel uh, you know, middle of your body, shooting out through the bottom of your, your front foot, okay? Same thing goes with the other side. You'll be back down on your knees, switch over, foot up, and stand, okay? Keeping that front leg bent. You're really going to be engaging that front quad, and it's gonna be kind of taxing on it, but that's fine, we're learning, and this is gonna progress you extremely fast. As you get better, it will become a little bit more even and less taxing on your muscles, okay? All right, so let's go back a little step, all right? With foiling, you have kind of three different levels of riding. We have to understand those and we can use them in a more aviation terms of taxiing, like an airplane doesn't want to take off uh, when he's not on the runway. So as you learn, you're going to want to keep that foil or that board in a taxi position, plant it on the water and just cruising around nice and easy. We don't want to run to, uh, to, to progressing, progressing into foiling right away. We want to learn the foil a bit and learn how it feels underneath us. We want to do it in our knee position, our one foot up position, and our standing position without ever engaging the foil. Our next step, our next step is going to be more of a touch and go type feel. That touch and go feel is going to be slightly engaging the foil and then setting the foil back down purposely immediately after takeoff. Sensations are going to be like audible. You're gonna hear nothing. You're gonna hear water driplets maybe, maybe a little bit of rush of air, but you're not gonna hear any spray coming off the board. Another audible sensation would be possibly a little bit more pressure in the sail. Maybe the sail goes a little bit more quiet, okay? As far as the sensation of the feeling side on the board, the board will become in a three-dimensional, almost four-dimensional, but three-dimensional feel of yaw, pitch, and roll, okay? That feeling is new to you, and you've never felt that before. That's why when we go in the touch and go stage, we release and we set the board right back down immediately, okay? And what that's gonna look like is this. You're gonna be forward pressure, you'll rock back, that engages the foil, and immediately after, forward, okay? Get forward on front of that board, put it back down on the water, okay? If you don't, you'll just progressively get higher and higher and higher, and you'll have a breach. Right before you breach, audible, you'll hear the water gurgling and a little bit of um, turbulence behind you, 
the foil is getting close to the surface, that should be a, a sign for you to put the board back down on the water, okay? You probably won't sense that for two or three sessions, but maybe you'll, you will right away. Some clients do, okay? All right, so that last stage is full flight. That's the ultimate, right? That's our goal here. That's the holy grail, right? And I tell you what, if you can do the touch and go stage of releasing the board and putting it back down, and you don't bypass that stage, you're gonna have a super successful time flying because you'll know what it means to set it down, both in pushing the foil forward or engaging and going up with it, okay? Once you can control that up and down, then all of a sudden, stability and flight is easy, I promise you, okay? So don't bypass the touch and go stage, it's the most crucial step, okay? All right, so we've gone over a lot, it's a long video. I'm hoping that you, you made it through the whole thing. We're gonna have plenty more reviews and um, uh, tutorials and how-to videos. We're getting into wind winging. It is the fastest growing sport in the world right now, and it's so accessible to everybody of all ages. So give us a call, 727-800-2202. Pick our brains or come take a lesson, elitewatersports.com. And I'm Aaron, have a good day.